So one of the most frequent questions in the channel comments is what is the best image generator? Well, today we're going to answer that question, but with a unique spin that I think is going to serve you better than the, you know, typical top 10 list. So off the top and just as an FYI, yes, this video is sponsored, although not by any AI image generator platform. So, you know, no bias here. I actually ended up partnering with Zapier on this one. And actually, this is kind of a funny story. So they reached out and asked if I would be interested in adapting a blog article that they wrote on this very topic. The article is very good. I will have it linked down below. But, you know, me being me, I had notes. And Zapier, apparently like chill as they are, were like, yeah, go ahead, just make it your own. I definitely would be remiss to say if you're looking for the best place to automate your work by connecting 8,000 plus apps like Google Sheets, Notion, and Slack without writing a single line of code, Zapier is the place to do it. Okay, let's kick things off. No particular order because each one of these has their own like strengths and weaknesses. So out of the gate with a heavyweight, we have Midjourney, arguably the most influential AI image generator. Launched in 2022 on Discord, it actually versioned up very quickly in that first year. And by version 4, which was released in November of that same year, it had pretty much established itself as leader of the pack in terms of artistic aesthetics in AI image generation. As time has gone on, more competition arose and others kind of found their look. That dominance may have waned, but a lot of that does come down to your personal taste. In my opinion, Midjourney's core strength has always been the fact that you could generate very beautiful images with very simple prompts. Over the years, Midjourney has continued to iterate on its core, establishing more controls, dash dash commands, and like prompt tricks within prompt tricks within prompt tricks to the point where there is like an entire cottage industry built around it. Now, as a bit of criticism on that front, a lot of those commands have now kind of made their way into the area of arcane knowledge rather than intuitive designs. But that is also a point of pride to the mid-journey hardcore. It's, it's like AI image spell casting, all of which I do feel is certainly more challenging in terms of onboarding someone new to mid-journey. That said, I do still recommend it to newcomers as it is like the easiest platform to generate really gorgeous images, uh, like no matter what you prompt. To this day, Midjourney is the tool for image style exploration. It is not the tool for repeatable and controllable images uh, for, say, things like storyboards and comic book panels. Although, in fairness, these are long requested features that they are slowly working on. Midjourney has no free trial. Its plans run between $10 and $120 a month. If you go annually, that's $8 to $96. Uh, personally, I would recommend the standard plan that I think that most people get buy with that amount of images per month. Next up, we have Leonardo.ai, who was another OG player in the image generation space. Also appearing in 2022, Leonardo differentiated itself by focusing on providing creators with you know, a higher degree of control, repeatable styles, and overall, it just kind of aimed to be a more comprehensive toolkit for creative production. Leonardo still offers a number of style presets, including the ability to train your own. You can also generate in flux there, which we will talk about in a little bit. And uh, additionally, they have their own image generation model, Phoenix. Some standout features on the Leonardo platform include flow state, which generates images almost as fast as you can type them. And they also have a very slept on creative image upscaler. I've been using this one a lot lately, and yeah, I've been really impressed with it. My main criticism of Leonardo is that, well, it's a lot. There's so much you can do. And I think that if you're a new user, like your eye is like going everywhere and you end up in a state of like paralysis. Additionally, I do feel that a lot of the more powerful features in Leonardo are kind of like squirreled away in some very unintuitive spots. So Leonardo, in my opinion, is best suited for someone that has some experience with another AI image generator. And you really have some time to explore its ins and outs. Uh, speaking of which, I got to do some like a full Leonardo tutorial. I've been threatening that for a while now. So I think it's, it's time we finally get around to that one. Leonardo does have a free tier. So at very minimum, I would recommend just signing up for it. Uh, from there, the monthly costs go from $12 to $60. Uh, if you go yearly, that is $10 to $48. Moving on, our next contender is actually kind of a newer contender, uh, Runway's Frames. Frames is Runway ML's 
own image generator and it places a strong focus on maintaining consistency in style. Admittedly, while I might have been a bit underwhelmed at launch, I, I do have to say that since the release of their reference feature, uh, this is turning into a real powerhouse. Now, I've covered references and frames like exhaustingly so in a number of videos that I'll have linked down below. But overall, Runway is definitely at the leading edge of one-shot uh, image model referencing. Plus, the model's internal architecture allows it to not only reference people, places, and things, but you know, understand instructions visually. Every day, people are finding new and interesting ways to generate in frames. That, that's super exciting. Plus, given the fact that you can use reference as essentially a style reference, this really gives you the opportunity to create a, a look that is wholly tailored to you. Runway does have a free trial of 125 credits, uh, and you can use frames and references there now. Uh, granted, it is 125 credits. It's not going to get you a lot, but at least you can give it a shot. From there, prices range from $15 to $95, the $95 uh, tier being unlimited. Now, because this does come up in the comments from time to time, uh, yes, there are credits on the unlimited plan. Essentially, once you burn through all of those, you are in uh, essentially slow boat mode, um, though I do have to say that I, you know, I generally end up generating in the slow boat on runway, and it's really not that long. Sliding over to the land of OpenAI, uh, we do have the ChatGPT 4.0 image generator. To note, not Dolly 4, although I really wish they would come up with a name besides uh, ChatGPT 4.0 image generator. Get it together, Sam. I mean, I get it. This isn't actually an image generator, but rather uh, this is ChatGPT simply understanding how to communicate visually. Now, I do have to say that prompt coherence is very strong with this model. And the fact that you can uh, essentially place text in the scene, I mean, that's very impressive. I will say that personally, I do find some of the artistic stylizations a bit bland, but I also might need to spend more time with it to try to get it to you know be a little more vivid, sharp, and poppy. Now, on the chat GPT side of things, I do find it actually, you know, kind of fun and interesting to generate images via, you know, a natural conversation, although you will end up arguing with it quite a bit, given that the content moderation can sometimes be pretty baffling. You can also use this model on the Sora platform, where it does act a little bit more like a standard image generator, like you can't have conversations with it on the Sora platform. Uh, this is actually where I use it most often. Although, again, some baffling decisions in terms of aspect ratios, as we can still only generate in 1-1, one, one, 2 3, and 3 2. You can generate images for free in ChatGPT, although with daily limits. I've heard uh, and that ranges anywhere between 3 to 10 images a day, uh, I guess, all depending on when you're trying to access it. There is, of course, the $20 subscription tier, which allows you to generate 50 images every three hours. Uh, I actually did not realize that there was a rate limit. Uh, that's It's pretty good. And with the pro $200 a month plan, which, yes, I did cancel, uh, that is, well, they're being a little dodgy about that. Uh, you get more than 50 images every three hours, but they actually don't say, uh, you know, how many more. So very typical open AI behavior. Trust us, it's more. So given that we just covered chat gpt this does seem like a pretty good moment to swing back over to our friends at zapier so zapier connects over 8,000 apps and you can do things well just for example for us like take your ai generated images or media and effortlessly move them to wherever you need them to go like no manual uploading it's all automated and there's a ton of other interesting things that you can do like there's four ways to automate spotify with zapier you can automate microsoft excel which gives you more time to goof off at work and work on your ai generated film you can even automate youtube i might have to look into that one the point being is that there is just a ton of different stuff that you can do using the apps that we all have to use every day. And by automating a lot of those repetitive tasks that we have to do in those applications, Zapier does end up freeing up time so that well, you can be more creative. Check out the link to Zapier down below and well, start your automation journey today. Moving on and sliding over to another personal favorite of mine. Uh, this is Ideogram, or as I like to call it, the king of text. 
Ideogram officially launched in August of 2023, made a significant splash with its ability to generate accurate text. As time has gone on, a number of other image generators have gotten a lot better at text, as notably we mentioned in the uh, ChatGPT 4.0 image generator. Uh, that said, it's not like the Ideogram team has been sitting on their laurels. They have been working on improving the image generation quality, aesthetics, and like overall artistic flair. Ideogram is now at a 3.0 model. Uh, they've also introduced a canvas editing feature as well as batch generation, which to be honest, I actually don't use this feature very much. I also find it to be a great tool for things like brainstorming YouTube thumbnails. Uh, in fact, actually the, uh, the highest performing video on this channel, which was the AI Doom video, which is currently sitting at 840,000 views. I mean, what? Well, anyhow, the thumbnail for that video was straight up ideogram right out of the box. Additionally, if you're looking for things like book covers, uh, title treatment explorations, or really anything else involving text, uh, yeah, give Audiogram a shot. They've got a really clean interface going on here. And honestly, I mean, one of the funniest community feeds that you're ever going to have the pleasure of scrolling through. I mean, honestly, I really don't have anything bad to say about Ideogram. Uh, pricing begins at $8 a month for the basic plan, uh, up to $60 a month for the pro plan. I have long been on the uh, the middle plan, the, the plus plan. Um, yeah, no, no plans on changing. Uh, if you want to do this yearly, you are looking at $7 a month, uh, $16 a month, and $48 a month. Sliding over to what might be a bit of a controversial one for this list is Adobe Firefly. I know that Adobe gets beaten up a lot. I mean, a lot of times justifiably, but at the same time, I do have to remember that they invited me to their office to yell at them about what they're doing wrong. So, you know, I mean, I got to give them credit when they do stuff right. So hopping into a blue police box to March of 2023, uh, yeah, Adobe launched Firefly V1 and I, it was not great, but the Adobe team have made a lot of improvements over the last few years. And uh, I mean, I got to say that the Firefly model is turning out to be, I mean, it's, it's pretty serviceable. Now, I will say that Firefly's main strengths are very much things that you would find in like traditional kind of like stock imagery. Although I do want to point out that they have improved with uh, kind of artistic outputs and uh, actually have added a number of additional styles there as well. So if you haven't checked out uh, Firefly in a while, maybe it's time to swing back. Now, the biggest upside to Firefly and kind of why it is on this list is the fact that it is backed by Adobe as being completely commercially safe to the point where oh, they'll take the hit if you get sued. So if that is a concern for you, well, Firefly's the spot. In terms of pricing, Firefly begins at $9.99 a month for, um, what's it, 2,000 credits. Uh, from there, it turns into uh, a pro plan at $29 and then a premium plan at $200. And then after that, you're into the uh, creative cloud apps. I'm not going to get into that part of it because well, that's a whole other thing. Moving on, we have mostly been discussing AI image generation platforms, but I mean, there's no way that we cannot deny the bombshell that is Flux. Flux, which was released by Black Forest Labs in August of 2024, is a open source AI image generator that uh, was, I mean, it was quickly hailed as the new king of the hill. And yes, while you can run Flux locally, I, th I thought this would make an interesting section to spotlight a few platforms uh, where you can utilize it. First, there is FreePick, where not only can you utilize Flux, but uh, you can then combine that with a number of like preset styles. Additionally, I did want to point out that FreePick actually has its own model as well called Mystic. And Mystic, well, I mean, I can't necessarily say for certain, but it has long been sort of speculated to be Flux kind of combined with uh, Magnific, the creative upscaler, and then some additional spank put on it. Um, I mean, one way or another, it looks good. Another platform to highlight with Flux is Kriya. Kriya has been another longtime favorite of mine. Uh, obviously, you can generate images there. Um, a plethora of video options here as well. They have editing features, a real-time uh, generator, and an enhanced feature as well. But what's always been impressive to me about Korea is the fact that like anytime something new drops, Korea has it up like sometimes within hours of it being released. 
I presume those guys drink as much, if not more, coffee than I do. The other spot that I wanted to highlight for Flux is uh, OpenArt.ai. OpenArt definitely flies under the radar, but they have been building a great platform. Additionally, OpenArt covers the comfy UI side of things as well. Uh, they have a number of you know comfy workflows here, as well as like a whole comfy academy uh, series of videos if you want to learn how to use comfy UI. Again, just wanted to spotlight open art. Really great crew over there. Very open to suggestions. In the meantime, on the Black Forest front, I think we're all very excited to see what Flux 2.0 is going to look like uh, when it eventually releases. And of course, there is the long-awaited video generator. Next up, we have Rev, which for the longest time I thought was Reeve, but it turns out it's Rev, which is French for dream, and I'm really butchering that pronunciation. So French speakers, feel free to throw baguettes at me. I will eat every single one of them. Anyhow, Rev is a well, fairly newly released AI image generator that shot up the like the whole AI image leaderboards really quickly. This one does excel in photorealism, although it is capable of doing a number of other styles as well. And in terms of strengths and weaknesses, well, this is an interesting one because in all honesty, I think its weakness is actually its strength, namely that there isn't much beyond prompting here. And that's kind of liberating. It's nice not to have like 300 options of different stylization passes and, you know, 400 different editing tools. This is it's almost like Zen like in terms of like its layout. On top of that, although Rev does have paid credits, uh, you do get 20 credits a day completely for free uh, to generate as you see fit. Uh, and then in a totally reasonable turn, you can simply buy 500 credits for $5 and each image costs one credit. So you can do the math there. Obviously, there are bigger plans for Rev. Uh, there will be more features plugged into this. But for right now, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, just head over, claim your 20 free images per day, and just have a nice relaxing time prompting and not having to think about you know, a thousand different stylization passes or what you're going to do with afterwards. Just kind of enjoy just writing some words and seeing some images. Next up, we have Recraft, which actually I did just cover very recently. That video will be linked down below. Uh, this is a platform that I think that if you're a designer is really worth looking at. They have recently introduced their infinite style feature, which, you know, allows you to blend together numerous styles to create, well, infinite styles. Where I think that Recraft really shines is for those of you who work in Illustrator, or Vector Graphics, or SVG files. As there is a bevy of options for exporting using color palettes or, you know, turning images to vectors. Once again, I did do an entire deep dive into Recraft earlier this week. So uh, again, link down below if you want to learn more about it. Rounding out, we do have Google's Imagen 4, or Imagine, as it was called on the I.O. stage. I don't know. I'm still hearing people call it Imagen 4. I've always called it Imagen 4. Is anybody calling it Imagine 4? Whatever it's called. I will say that I've actually become a Imagen fan since version 3. I was not a fan of 1 and 2. But 3 really started to showcase a, a pretty remarkable amount of like prompt coherence and just like overall imagination. The base model of Imagen 4 will, uh, I mean, it'll probably appear on most platforms. I believe that Crea and FreePick and LTX Studio already have it. Uh, so via API, it will be available everywhere. So ultimately, again, I think this very much highlights that there is no one image generator to rule them all. In fact, you'll probably end up getting the best results when you, you know, take two of them and bash them together, plus do a little bit of manual editing on your own. Yes, AI imagery is getting really good, but you will always end up with the most unique and interesting stuff if you, you add a little of your own elbow grease in. Finally, once again, my thanks to Zapier for sponsoring today's video. Uh, you can check out their original article linked down below. And while you're there, why not sign up? It is free to start. There is no credit card required. Required. Upgrade only when you need more advanced features or higher usage. In the meantime, hey, drop a comment down below. Let me know what your favorite AI image generator is or, you know, your own personal top 10. As always, I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.